Character Chronicles is going prime time, baby. Welcome to the People Show, brought to you by X Cancer. Check them out at xcancer.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't done a whole lot of who should be our head coaching videos. I, I did give Mickey Joseph a grade in the show that I did yesterday. Check that out if you missed it. But there's so much information out there. I'm getting so many texts and messages and what's real, what's not now. I've mentioned that I do see some commonalities. Uh, there's also people that I trust. But I'm that guy, rather than trying to be the first one to get it out there and maybe not be accurate, I'd rather be the guy that's maybe late to the party and do my best to be accurate. Now, that's just me. Everybody's different. But there's a reason I decided to do this particular show today. And I'll get to that in a minute because I am well aware that I could have done more of these videos. I'm well aware that the three most, shall we say, controversial, exciting names, however you want to phrase it, that I could talk about are Urban Meyer, which I did talk about in the character live show right after the Oklahoma game, but there was a reason for that at the time. Also, P.J. Fleck. I don't quite understand the hate for P.J. Fleck in the state of Nebraska. I get he's a little annoying, okay, but... If he came to Nebraska and was hired and we started winning, guess what? We'd all be rowing the frickin' boat, and I'd be leading the frickin' charge. I just want to win football games and do it with some class. But he beats us every year with less talent, so there is that. The other name's Deion Sanders. Prime time baby. Now, just so you know, and this is not why I'm doing this video. I'll get into it in a minute why I'm doing it. He's actually my favorite player growing up. I think I admired someone who was completely opposite than me in just about every way. He was I'm, I'm, I was quiet at the time. I know that probably shocks you. He was loud. I was not flashy. He was. I was a lineman. He was maybe the fastest player in the league at the time. So he was my favorite player growing up. But I've never really thought about actually doing a video on him um, other than, hey, it's going to get a bunch of reactions. I'm, I'm not really about clickbait. But I decided to do this video, okay, because I started watching his pregame, post-game, halftime speeches, because they record a lot of the things that he says to his Jackson State, State team in his regular team meetings. I'll tell you what, the guy was not only physically talented, but he understands the mental approach, and he understands how to win, and we are missing that right now. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I wasn't supposed to talk about that yet. It's supposed to be in my second reason why he could be a good coach here in Nebraska. I got a little ahead of myself. But let's light this candle, shall we? Because I've got three pros, and I don't want to say cons, but maybe three things that caution me about hiring him. And I, let me be very, very clear. This is not me saying he's going to be our next head coach. This is not me saying I've got some sort of inside info about Dion being our next head coach. This is me saying he's now one of my top five guys that I would like to see hired on my personal list. And what if? What if? What if, ladies and gentlemen? So let's light this candle. All right. Number one, the number one thing that I like about him potentially being our head coach is recruiting. If you want to compete with and beat the big boys, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, you got to be able to match them with athleticism, talent, size, physicality, all those things. Part of that's developing players, but I'll get to that. Now, Adam, what in the world is wrong with you? And no disrespect to Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. We're not even beating them right now, but that's kind of what I expect people to say. Adam, we're not even beating Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. How can we shoot for those teams? Okay. So I've talked about the staircase of success before. Let's be honest. We're at the bottom. Okay, Ohio State and Michigan are at the top. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, with all due respect, because they're great programs. Okay, you're somewhere in the middle. If you shoot for the middle, then that's your ceiling. If you shoot for the top, then ideally you're going to go through the middle on your way to try to get to the top. So that's my logic and theory and reasoning behind this. Of course we have to start beating Iowa. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northwestern teams like that before we compete with the big boys. But don't shoot for here and cap your ceiling. Those are just my thoughts. Now, when Georgia kind of overtook Alabama, because the past couple years, if you notice for years and years and years, Alabama always had the number one recruiting class seemingly year after year after year. As of late, the past five years, way more often than not, I know A&M was last year the number one recruiting class in the country. It's been Georgia. Georgia has overtaken Alabama more often than not in the past half a decade in recruiting rankings. Now, I've always been that guy. I get somewhat annoyed when people just hinge everything on recruiting rankings, especially with the transfer portal and everything else. I've always been the guy that says, I don't care who you are when you walk through the door. It's what you do once you're in the building. That's because... I'm going to be honest, some people crapped all over me when I was recruiting, and then I watched four- and five-star guys come in, and I knocked them on their keister, and they knocked me on my keister, but I got up more times than most of them did. I watched some of them work out really well, and I watched some of them quit, take their ball, and go home. That's not an indictment on four- and five-star guys. A lot of them work out, obviously, just watch the college football playoffs. 
But the counter argument is, because I'm about development, about developing, developing who you got, whoever walks through the door. Because the counter argument is, okay, the teams in the college football playoff almost every year seem to be repetitive more often than not. There also seem to be the same teams at the top of the college football recruiting rankings every year. But Adam, we dominate, I've talked about this, we dominate the Big Ten West in recruiting every year, yet we're nowhere near the top. Well, that's because we lack developing players. Okay, you got to develop the players in the weight room, in the film room, practice field. Okay, you got to keep them in house. How can you develop people who don't stay? And I know the transfer portal has made coaching so much harder in college football today. But when that guy comes in the door, I don't care who you are. But why not make that guy as talented as you can be, but then actually develop him? Just my thoughts. Now, Deion Sanders did something I don't know if it's ever been done before. He coaches at Jackson State. You probably know that. He took the number one recruit in the entire country, Travis Hunter, took him from Florida State, a Power 5 program. Has that ever been done before? His alma mater, Deion Sanders, I might add. Okay, because here's the deal. Deion can walk into any living room in the entire country. Okay, and he can immediately recruit with and against Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, any team in the SEC, any team in the country, including any team in the Big Ten. Here's the thing. He's also got the respect of his players. As you know... A lot of times a kid can come in with a lot of hype and maybe there's issues that come with that. Not always, but sometimes Travis Hunter didn't start in one of the recent Jackson State games. Now imagine that. The number one recruit in the entire country at a small school like Jackson State, you would imagine he may not be happy. He'd be pouting on the sidelines, something like that. Now, I don't know what his attitude was before the game. Maybe it was great. Maybe it wasn't. Dion talked to him. I watched that. He talked to him. And throughout the game, Travis was into the game. He was supporting his teammates. And I guarantee it's because... Dion has his respect, okay? Now, number two, and this is kind of why I'm doing this video. I alluded to it earlier. Dion, under, he's not only physically talented when he was a player, he understands what it takes to be a great player. I've started watching those YouTube clips of his pregame speeches, postgame speeches, halftime speeches, his team meeting speeches. He is. He's, he's kind of like old school in the way that he looks at things and his mentality, and I like that. He is, and that's why I was like, man, maybe, maybe he'd be a decent coach here at Nebraska, pretty good. You know, he has a great mental approach, a great outlook. He understands what it takes to be successful, and we're missing that mental approach. We just flat out are. That's why less talented teams and the lack of development beat us a lot of times. I love the fact that Dion understands that. I love what he says to his team right now. I guarantee it's another reason why they're playing so well at their level. And I love the fact that he's kind of old school in things he has to say. His son, I hope I say his name right, Shadur Sanders is a quarterback who's really freaking good at Jackson State. And maybe he comes along with Dion too. All right, my third and final reason that I think pro, he might be a good coach here, he's got the cool factor. Now, to be clear, I'm not about big, flashy it's a big splash hire. I don't really care. I don't care if it's the most boring hire under God's hot sun when our next head coach is announced as long as they win. If they win, they're going to be flashy and splashy and all that other stuff and stuff in my eyes. Just win. It's all I care about. But here's the deal. Because just so you know, two other coaches that are in my top five that I'd like to see potentially hired here are Lance Leipold of Kansas and Chris Kleiman of Kansas State. I wouldn't call them the flashiest guys under God's hot sun. So I think that I hope that makes sense. Now, I saw a thing recently, and it was a poll, and it was who are the top, who are the blue blood programs in America in college football? I was genuinely surprised. There was eight teams listed. I could have told you the other seven pretty easily. I was genuinely surprised to see Nebraska listed on there. Now, obviously, I would list them on there because I'm completely unbiased and objective. <clears throat> but I was surprised to see other people list Nebraska on there because let's be honest, we're not respected like we used to be. Okay, especially not nationally. Deion Sanders would catch the the attention of high school kids across the country. Imagine this potential coaching staff, recruiting staff. Deion Sanders, Mickey Joseph, Bill Bush. Mickey Joseph would lock down the state of Nebraska in recruiting, and I'm so sick and tired of hearing, it's okay that all these Nebraska kids keep going elsewhere. No, it's not. If we want to have success, we got to start by locking down our own freaking state recruiting-wise, and Mickey Joseph would do that. Deion Sanders can recruit nationally. And Bill Bush, I list all three of these guys because if you listed the top 15 recruiters in the country, there's three of them right there. Now, all right, what would I guess you want to call them cons to Dion potentially being our head coach? Let's, let's list these three, okay? 
Number one, not a lot of coaching experience. How would he do battling game plan wise and schematically with and against Big Ten teams? I've sat in their offices, looked in the eyes of Scott Frost, Greg Austin, when they've looked at me and said, man, the coaches in this conference can coach. They are smart. They can scheme and game plan. I mean, to me, that meant we're getting out coached. That's how I took that. But I've also interviewed my former coach, Frank Solich, on my show a couple years ago. And I said, coach, what's the number one thing you have to do to be a successful college coach? He said, Adam, anyone can learn to draw plays. You have to be able to recruit, develop that talent, and build relationships with those players so they buy in. I think Dion can do all those things. Now, I haven't met Dion, okay? But he seems like a smart guy to me. Okay, number two, would it be a good match? This seems like a fair question to ask. You got prime time. He's flashy. Okay, Nebraska's kind of blue collar smash mouth, or at least we used to be. Personally, I find this more intriguing than anything else. Uh, I don't really think it's a big issue. I just thought I'd mention it. All right, last but certainly not least, patience. And this is on both sides, actually. Both sides, to be fair, patience. Now, would Husker Nation, okay, have the patience to let Dion maybe learn on the job a bit while he recruits that talent and develops it? I think they would. But on the flip side, would Dion be interested in coaching at Nebraska? I think those are both fair questions to ask. And I will say this, coaches coach, players make plays. Now, like this show, if you think he'd be an exciting hire, let me know in the op- comments below. Would he be a good option as a coach? Let me know in the comments below. Would he be in your top five potential coaching candidates for Nebraska? Imagine Dion wearing the Huskers logo. Go Big Red and always remember, throw the puh. This show is brought to you by X Cancer. Join the fight at XCancerStore.com and support your loved ones, your neighbors, and cancer fighters all over the world and help them gain access to revolutionary treatments. XCancerStore.com has a wide variety of t-shirts and merchandise supporting a wide variety of cancer battles so you can show off the colors that matter. Proceeds from each purchase not only help those at home, but also cancer fighters in Tanzania, Africa. Check them out at XCancerStore.com.